you for tuning into The Boardroom, where we highlight important updates, discussions, and decisions from each monthly Atlanta Public Schools board meeting. I am Cherise Starby, and this is an inside view of The Boardroom from the January 14th, 2013 meeting. Chuck Burbridge, Chief Financial Officer for APS, presented a financial update presentation before the board at the January meeting. According to Burbridge, the overall revenue picture for the district has not changed dramatically since his last presentation. Suffice it to say that uh, uh, I think it's, it's, it's with uh, great confidence. I, I'm willing to say that the revenue picture is not deteriorating. Uh, it, is, it is stabilized uh, to the extent that we uh, are getting information about uh, taxes and other revenue sources uh, that tends to be uh, on, on the positive side. So, uh, so we'll, but we'll wait till February before we, we actually provide a, a new forecast. Burbridge says that an E-rate update will be available in February. The worst financial news the district has received since December is a $2.8 million negative impact due to a ruling against the district regarding charter schools. In the meantime, the district continues to look at payroll information and is working with IT to get a mapping between multiple systems regarding payroll. Burbage expects payroll review to have a positive impact in February. Marquinta Sands, Director of Safety and Security for APS, also gave a presentation before the board during the January meeting. Chief Sands described the presentation as an overview of conversations that began last year around climate, culture, and safety. She also highlighted the safety program APS implemented over a year ago in the Douglas Cluster. 22 officers were assigned in this feeder pattern, with six being assigned to Douglas. This year, there are seven resource officers with 40 hours of school-based training. The Douglas Cluster was chosen to test the school resource officer model because Douglas led the district with the highest incident rates in 2011. To be exact, 106 crimes against persons incidents and 24 crimes against property incidents. Already, we have recognized some value in the placement of these officers in the cluster through empirical and subjective data. For instance, the empirical data over the past five months comparing last year to the same time period of this year indicates that there's been a slight decrease in crimes against people and an increase in crimes against property, specifically theft of electronics, to include cell phones and iPods. We anticipate ending the school year with a decrease in both categories. According to Chief Sands, 70% of our safety personnel report to APD. This structure weakens our ability to proactively address crime issues on campus. APS hopes to move towards the Triad School Resource Officer Model. The Triad model consists of full-time employees that are armed law enforcement personnel who are trained in school-specific topics assigned to middle and high schools. Following the safety and security presentation, Superintendent Errol Davis explained to the school board that establishing an Atlanta Public Schools police force would put full-time school resource officers in schools, now being served by 55 full-time and 233 part-time Atlanta officers. Davis told the board he would present a proposal over the next few months on how the district would phase out the Atlanta police officers and develop its own police force and how much it would cost. On September 28, 2012, Atlanta Public Schools received a petition from Atlanta Preparatory Academy to renew the school's charter for a second five-year term. The charter school's current five-year term expires on June 30, 2013. According to staff committee and external reviewers, the applicant has not met the minimum requirements for a successful renewal petition. At last month's meeting, Atlanta Preparatory requested that the district table the issue to allow for more time for the school to provide evidence as to why the board should approve its petition for renewal. Atlanta Preparatory Academy opened a year late and the school argued that they should be given an additional year to generate positive results. Good evening, my name is David Jaffer and I serve on the APA board. Uh, for over 20 years I've worked for large insurance companies and banks, managing people and processes. During that time I've also served on various nonprofit organizations, each with its own unique mission, challenges and accomplishment. So while I may be new to APA, I'm certainly not new to managing change or delivering results. 
Today, I'd like this board to focus on one item, which is our math curriculum. And that is a source of concern for Alan Mueller about our school. Um, while I wish I could stand before you and tell you that when the CRCT results are going to come out, we're going to be the highest school in Georgia, I can't. But what I can tell you is that when these results come out, we are going to show significant improvement. Uh, I'm James Young, professor and chair of the curriculum department at Clark Atlanta University. The University School of Education has formed a collaboration with APA. The School of Education will be significantly involved in what APA is trying to do in terms of bringing about improvement in the curriculum. Our trajectory is in line with the core curriculum and it has a timeline and benchmark to show that what has to be done at APA can be done in a reasonable time. Although the school's renewal application includes an aggressive turnaround plan and several talented individuals serve on the school's board, the Petition Review Committee did not believe that the school would be successful, given past performance and the lack of organizational stability observed on the board over time. This month, after careful consideration, the board voted 8 to 1, with Byron Amos dissenting to deny APA's renewal petition. But my thing is, a contract is a contract, and my thing is um, um, we cannot continue to say, well, we got to let them get away with it because we have some school reform. we got to look out for the best interest of the students, so I make a motion that we uphold the superintendent recommendation. Okay. Second. I've got a motion and a second to uphold the superintendent recommendation. Any All those in favor of the motion to mm -hmm. deny? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Uh, Ms. Muhammad, did you vote on that? Yeah, I, I, I did not vote. Okay. And Ms. Bubba broke out your hand on that. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't see it. Okay. okay. So 8-1. Right. At the January 14th meeting, the proposed district calendars for 2013-14 and 2014-15 were brought before the board for first read. The calendar development process included a community-wide survey with approximately 5,900 respondents as well as analysis of student attendance data. As a result of the survey responses, the proposed calendars are consolidated calendars with August start dates. The proposed calendars cover the next two school years to provide advanced planning time for APS employees and families. Rebecca Kay, APS Organizational Advancement Division, describes some of the changes from past calendars. The first is that we uh, plan to consolidate the entire district onto one calendar, so no longer having a traditional calendar for 82 of the schools as we do now and a year-round calendar for three of the schools. Um, the second big change is that uh, our community information that we pulled together and the feedback we got from the calendar committee showed that we, um, that our community generally wanted to move more to, to a more balanced calendar. So the proposal that we have is not a true kind of classic example of any one kind of calendar. We created a calendar that we felt like um, incorporated the best of the different uh, choices in calendars that we studied in going into this development process. So um, the calendar is starting at about the same time. The proposed date for 2013 is to begin on August 5th. And then we have added um, expanded breaks in October and February to the calendar. So in the last few years, we've had um, two, three day breaks in the fall in October and the winter in, in February. And these calendars have full week breaks um, throughout the year. We've tried to place these strategically to give, um, to not just give students and teachers a, a break during those times, but to put them in places where we know that we have transitions happening, like in at the end of the first grading period, it'll give teachers time to really reflect on student learning, um, and it will give us a, a good chunk of time a full week where if we have students who are going into um, camps that are happening during that time that they can get real quality kind of remediation and enrichment during that time. So um, those are kind of the big changes in the recommendations from the calendar that we have this year for 2012-13. Listen to some of the feedback and discussion from stakeholders and the board. I'm here on behalf of Centennial regarding the calendar. The proposed calendar APS has out now. Um, we got a visit from a school last week 
regarding, and we at CP, as you know, are year-round. Unlike, you know, Hope Hill and other schools, our parents and community and leader were highly involved in the school, and our skids have proven success on a year-round calendar. Taking away this year-round calendar for our community will harm our kids because remediation is key to getting our kids to achieve what they need to in test scores and grading and everything throughout the year. I feel as though our parents and schools haven't had, it came out and we should defer this till first read till next month so that we can participate in the community meetings and listen to the feedback and then come back if there are some changes instead of almost going down that same pattern we did with redistricting. I think it would be for best if we deferred it. It's not due to the state till May, I believe, so if we did it for first read in February and then voted on it in March, it seems as though there'd still be enough time, and I think that our constituents would feel more involved with it. After lengthy discussion, the board voted unanimously to table the first read of the calendar until the February 4th board meeting. This will provide APS and the board with additional time to hear and consider feedback from the community, parents, and students during scheduled community meetings before the first read occurs. The Department of Organizational Advancement will present information about the proposed calendars to the community. The district calendar meetings will take place from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. in each region as follows. The South Region on January 22, 2013 at South Atlanta High School. And the West Region on January 23, 2013 at Mays High School. And the East Region on January 28 at Inman Middle School. And in the North Region on January 29, 2013 at Douglas High School. Stakeholders may also submit a public comment before February 1, 2013 by contacting Rebecca K. Policy Office at rkaye at atlantapublicschools.us or by mail and in person at the address listed on the screen. At the January board meeting, John Lyles, Director of Transportation for APS, gave a presentation highlighting proposed bail schedule changes. According to Lyles, the goals of changing the bail schedule are to improve student safety, improve on-time arrival, and improve efficiency. The current elementary start and end times are 8 a.m. and 2.30 p.m., but the proposed times are 7.45 a.m. and 2.15 p.m. High school is currently set to begin at 8.15 a.m. and end at 3.15 p.m. with a proposed time of 8.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. And the middle school times are 8.45 a.m. and 3.45 p.m. But the presentation proposed 9.05 a.m. and 4.05 p.m. start and end times respectively. The current APS bail schedule is inconsistent with all other bail schedules in Metro Atlanta, Cobb, Clayton, Henry, DeKalb, Savannah, Gwinnett, Augusta, and Cherokee County all have similar bail schedules to the one Lyles proposed in his presentation to the board. According to Lyles, the advantages of the proposed bail schedule are improved on-time arrival, improved breakfast participation, improved ride times for special needs students, and avoiding the addition of 50 buses next school year. The Atlanta Board of Education has approved a task force to review the proposal to rename Cascade Elementary School to the Dr. Joseph Eccles Lowry Elementary School. The task force is chaired by Ms. Yolanda K. Johnson and Mr. Byron D. Amos. The task force held a meeting on Wednesday, January 16, 2013 to discuss the proposed name change. Basically upon the receipt of any ask recommendations, suggestions to rename a school, we convene a meeting. And the purpose of the meeting is to evaluate not only that ask, but the, in my opinion, the renaming of the school in general. The board's policy on naming facilities will be adhered to. Nominations will be accepted by the committee from individuals, organizations, or board members. Each nomination must be in writing and must include the reasons to justify the nomination. The names of the sponsors of the nomination must also be included. 
Consideration will be given to names of local communities, neighborhoods, streets, landmarks, and individuals who have made a significant contribution. Names of individuals will be considered only after they have been deceased for five years. The board will vote in public whether to waive the five-year policy on being deceased. The name recommended will not duplicate, cause confusion, or otherwise conflict with the names of existing facilities in the school system. The Atlanta Board of Education invites the community to provide input regarding the renaming of Cascade Elementary School. The deadline for submissions is Thursday, January 31st, 2013. Submissions may be made electronically to hgrant at atlanta.k12.ga.us or submissions may be mailed to the address listed on the screen. Another important action item on this month's board meeting agenda was personnel gains and losses. Over the past year, the Board of Education and APS administration has been working to permanently fill several principal positions in schools across the system. During the public comment portion of the night and the community meeting, several parents and community stakeholders offered their opinions of the leadership at their school and spoke to the fact that a permanent principal provides the stability necessary for student and employee achievement. I'm going to be operating with our third principal. So in the, in the time that he's been there, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be dealing with another principal. We have to get, get used to a new style. We have partners on board. We have families on board. But operating without any permanent principal hinders the ability for us to be a true community in every respect. And this new principal will most likely be interim also. So there's no guarantee it won't happen again. Um, you can't build a school with community involvement if you all won't make the commitment to put in a leader that will be there permanently. At the January 14th meeting, the board voted to appoint 18 individuals to permanent principal positions throughout the district. As a result of these appointments, Superintendent Earl Davis noted that there will be no interruptions or disruptions to schools during the 2012-13 school year. In this week's new hire spotlight, we would like to congratulate the 18 newly approved permanent principals throughout Atlanta Public Schools. The board approved the following recommended principal appointments and promotions at the January 14th board meeting. Tawana Crooms at Brown Middle School, Anthony Howe at Forest Hills Academy, Marshall Hunt at Scott Elementary, Aquanette Smith at Salter Towns Elementary, William Shroom at Smith Elementary, Sharnita West at Dobbs Elementary, Susan Krim at McClendon Woodson Elementary, Keisha Gibbons at Boyd Elementary, Paula Hurama at Inman Middle, Nolitha High at Deerwood Academy, Reginald Lawrence at West Manor Elementary, Vonda McKeever at Benteen Elementary, Melanie Mitchell at Humphreys Elementary, Gregory Parks at Usher Coyer Heights Elementary, Tony Pickett at Connolly Elementary, Raquel Rimpola at Fickett Elementary, Clara Taylor at D.H. Stanton Elementary, and Tommy Usher at Garden Hills Elementary. I sat down with Reginald Lawrence and Clara Taylor to discuss their thoughts on their permanent appointment and plans for their schools moving forward. I am honored um, to, have given, to have been given the opportunity to serve as not just interim principal, but principal going long term. The other side, as I shared with the staff, was when even when I was asked to come over here as interim, I never walked into the position as an interim. I walked into the position as instructional leader of the building to do what was best for the children. Um, being named the permanent principal of West Manor is an honor, and I'm very happy to have achieved this milestone. Um, I look forward to working with the students and the teachers to continue the road to excellence at West Manor. The first day of the 2013 session of the Georgia General Assembly began on January 14th. Board members and district representatives from the Office of External Affairs are set to execute the district's legislative strategy based on the board's approval of three broad legislative priorities, state-local partnerships, public education funding, and public school choice. APS will meet with the Atlanta Fulton delegation, monitor and advocate for legislation, and engage parents and community members in the legislative process. 
Board members and school system leaders are also re-engaging the city's 25 Neighborhood Planning Units, or NPUs. An MPUM meeting will be held on January 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Helene S. Mills Senior Facility with Karen Walden and board members Courtney English and Brenda Muhammad. An MPUZ meeting is scheduled for February 26th at 7 p.m. at Roselle Fan Recreation Center with Dr. Danielle Battle and board members Courtney English, Brenda Muhammad, Yolanda Johnson, and Emmett Johnson. If you represent a community organization that would like to schedule a meeting with an APS leader, we ask that you call the Office of External Affairs at 404-802-2826. At the January board meeting, the board continued discussions surrounding a superintendent search firm and search committee. Listen as board chair Ruben McDaniel outlines the current plan and next steps for the search process. Yes, I mean, basically we decided from a committee perspective to have 13 members total. Of those, four will be selected by board vote and I have requested that each board member bring three potential candidates for that and we will basically as a board look at resumes and bios for those 27 candidates that we get and vote uh, on the top four. Uh, taking into consideration we want to have good representation from things like the philanthropic community, the parent community, the business community. So to the extent the top four were all business people as an example, we would then look for uh, having maybe one business person filling in with other types of candidates from, again, the top of that uh, that voting list. Search so firm goes, uh, there was one firm that came out with the best numbers, and so we're going to interview that firm and also do reference checks, assuming that that firm passes those two criteria and there are no uh, uh, problems, we will hire that firm as our search firm. At each board meeting, community stakeholders are given an opportunity to speak publicly to the board. Several of the public comments at the January 14th meeting addressed Atlanta Preparatory Academy's renewal petition, principal selection process, and teacher compensation. Let's take a brief look at a few of the night's public comments. Personally, making an appeal on the behalf of the children, the parents, the teachers to allow Atlanta Preparatory Academy to remain open and we would be most grateful. Thank you very much. It has always been the policy of Atlanta Public Schools to review the charter application in its fifth year. We are only in our fourth year, and we ask that we are granted the same opportunity. Um, I am here on behalf of the parents, the teachers, and staff of Bunch Middle School to express a concern we have about the lack of progress in selecting a candidate for the principal of Bunch. Um, we have been pleased to, be rep to have representatives on two interview panels um, for the position, but yet no candidate has been selected. We'd like to understand why that is and what we can do to help facilitate the selection process. I and hundreds of other highly qualified teachers are working tirelessly to help the students in APS succeed. Mr. Errol Davis has charged us to achieve excellence in everything we do. Unfortunately, we are not being compensated for our hard work and have actually taken pay cuts in the form of furlough days for the past two years. Board Chair Ruben McDaniel says the board has a lot of upcoming work centered around the superintendent search and the budget. Listen to Ruben's remarks regarding the January 14th meeting as he recaps important moments and outlines key objectives for the board moving forward. Well, I think that um you know, we're now moving into testing season and uh, planning season for next year. But the biggest thing that's about to come upon us is the budget. Uh, so, you know, we already have begun work as an administration on developing uh, budget protocols. But this spring, we'll have to come up with a budget. And it's going to be a very difficult budget year. The, legislature, the Georgia legislature has begun their work now. Our expectation is we'll have less funding from the state than we had before. Uh, we are hoping that we've reached the bottom from a property tax perspective, but we may still have some issues for property tax-wise as well. So uh, we're expecting revenue constraints, but we will. the budget is going to be the biggest issue we tackle as we go forward. It is a new year. Please be advised of the APS board meeting schedule for 2013. Upcoming meetings are scheduled as follows. February 4th, March 4th, April 1st, May 6th, June 10th, July 1st, August 5th, September 9th, October 7th, November 4th, and December 2nd. 
Thank you for tuning in. Tune in each month for information regarding the Atlanta Board of Education and important agenda items from monthly board meetings. The next board meeting will be held on February 4th, 2013 at the Center for Learning and Leadership, 130 Trinity Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia, 30303. Stakeholders who would like to provide public comment during the monthly Committee of the Whole meeting should contact the Board Office at least one hour prior to the scheduled time of the Committee of the Whole meeting by calling 404-802-2200. Stakeholders wishing to address the Board during the Community meeting must register in person at the sign-in table from 5 o'clock p.m. to 5.50 p.m. on the day of the Community meeting. Community members must list their names and agenda item or topic they wish to address. Community members will be given up to two minutes to address the board. At APS, we are renewing our commitment to you.